Okay, I think we'll get going. Uh, well, as I say, good afternoon and thank you for joining us for our Meet the Russell Group webinar series. This is session number four of five that we're running this week, um, with today focusing on researching university options and our session later on today at 4.30, focusing on personal statements. Um, if any of you have joined us for the previous sessions, welcome back. Um, if you haven't been with us for a previous one, do not worry, by registering previously, you'll actually be sent a recording of all of the presentations that have happened this week um, at some point next week. So on, on to our session today. What are we talking about? We're talking about researching university options. We've got four um, of the uh, Russell Group with us today who will be presenting. Uh, we have got with us Daniel from University of Exeter, Sam from Newcastle University, we've got Samar from the University of Nottingham, and we've got Poppy from Queen Mary University of London. We have also got in the background Fiona from the University of Glasgow, Tallulah from the University of Manchester, and Rao from University College London, who will be in the Q&A function. Now, to mention the Q&A function, obviously we're looking to answer as many questions that you guys have over the course of this particular session. However, I would wait until we've had the first round of presentations first from our panelists, uh, because they're going to be covering a lot of uh, important information, and then maybe using the Q&A function afterwards with all of your questions. Now, to go over again, the universities we've got represented today, Exeter, Newcastle, Nottingham, Queen Mary, Glasgow, Manchester, and UCL. If you have any question which should be directed specifically for one of those panelists, if you just make sure to include either the name of the panelist or the institution they're representing before asking the question, uh, then that will obviously help them to make sure they can come back to you as quick as possible. Um, but we've got a great session lined up today. Um, so please do ask as many questions as you, as you have, because it's a great opportunity to speak to people who are working at such uh, prestigious institutions as they are. Right, so I think we're going to get started with our first panellist. So we've got Daniel from uh, University of Exeter. If I can pass over to you, Daniel. Hi, Martin. Thank you. Um, is is the slide going to go up? Oh, fab, yeah. Great. Hopefully um, you can all see the slides. Just while Martin gets gets the right one up, it's um I think it's the previous slide, Martin. So maybe the previous one. Yeah, there we go. Great, thank you. Um, always love it when the tech comes together. Um, hi everyone. Hope um hope you're doing okay. Um, it's a it's a sunny day where I am. Hopefully it is for you as well. Um, today's a really great opportunity for you to to find out more about universities. And um, there's so many great um universities. Um, um logged in today so you're going to hear some some great stuff about lots of great universities where um you'd have loads of great experiences um if, if you went to them um so do yeah do ask your questions today on on any topic and any university um <clears throat> i was considering what to put on on my slide for the university of exeter um could have put all sorts of of stats on um lots of other unis have, have done that which is really helpful but I just wanted to quite simply put uh, a map on to show you where we're based, um, because a lot of people don't know. Um, apparently, sometimes people think we're in France. Um, I'm not quite sure how that works out, but there you go. We're not in France. We are in uh, the southwest um, in Devon, um, and we've also got a campus in Cornwall down in Penryn as well. Um, it's a lovely part of the country. Um, it's yeah in Devon and Cornwall. It's it's beautiful. I'm sure many of you have been there on holiday. But if you haven't, um, you can come and check us out. We've got open days um in October, um that you can come to. Um, so we're uh, all, all of our campuses aren't too far from the seaside. So there's a big culture of um going to the sea, uh, sort of weekends and after exams, um at Exeter. Um, and as you can see, we're not we're not quite as far away um, as you think. So from um, London by train, um, it's two hours. Uh, from Birmingham, there's a direct train uh, available. Um, even from Manchester, um, you know, accessible by train uh, as well. So um, it's a lovely part of the country. Um, I mean, there's loads of statistics I could I could tell you about our sort of sports or the different courses we offer. Um, but the main thing I want to tell you is, um, yeah, in terms of our location, that's something we're really uh, proud of. And the students have a really positive learning experience um, while they're at Exeter. But yeah, happy to take um, any more questions um, in the in the Q&A uh, about anything specific about our courses, 
uh, or any statistics that you want to hear as well. But um, I hope it's really helpful, um, helpful afternoon for you. Thank you. That's great. Thank you so much, Daniel. And I must say, actually, I visited Exeter and Penryn uh, to the campuses earlier on this year, and I can attest to the fact that Exeter and Penryn, both beautiful campuses and absolutely beautiful areas. Um, let me pass on now then uh, over to uh, Dan uh, from Newcastle University. Thanks, Martin. Thanks very much. Hi, everybody. Hope you're having a nice day so far. Um, my name's Sam, and I'm coming from Newcastle University, all the way up in the northeast. Um, you can see some of our main statistics about the university there on the screen. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit more anecdotally about the university and um, some of the, the top things I like to talk about with prospective students. Um, so I think as well, probably quite similarly to Exeter, a lot of people think we're really, really far away, quite sort of out of the way from a lot of major cities in the UK. Um, but again, we are really, really well connected. Um, so again, a couple of hours on the train from London. Um, so even though we might be quite far away from you, we are very well connected as well. Um, some of the top courses that we're ranked for um, that I just want to recommend uh, would be uh, Speech and Language Sciences, Agriculture and Fine Art. Um, so we're all, rate, all those three courses are rated. We are rated first in the UK for those ones. Um, if you're interested in those sorts of rankings, um, we're also top 100 in the world for things like pharmacy, dent dentistry, physiology. Um, so that's something that we're quite proud of as well. Um, obviously, being a Russell Group University, we've got lots of research going on in our institutions and all of that will inform all of the um, studies that you do. If you do come to study with us, you'll be taught by researchers, you'll be involved with research. Um, a lot of the information that you'll be taught will be backed up by research that's done at the university. Um, so that's really, really interesting. I always like to talk about um, a couple of years ago, a some research was done, which led at Newcastle University, which led to the production of a new drug for ovarian cancer, um, which is quite nice, quite interesting to talk about. Um, obviously, uh, Newcastle is very, very sort of into sports as well. We do play in the Bucks League, so the British University and Colleges Sports League. Loads and loads of different sports you can get involved with at any sort of level. Um, if you want to play just for fun, great. If you want to play sort of nationally, um, you can do that as well. Um, we've got loads and loads of societies, some weird and wonderful stuff um, that I can answer questions on later on. Um, some societies I'd never even heard of as well. Um, but yeah, do come and give us a visit if you fancy learning more about Newcastle University. We've got an open day in November if you'd like to come and speak to us or visit the campus. Um, but I think I'll just end with sort of one of my favourite things about Newcastle Uni, which is probably quite unique in that we're a campus and a city university. So um, we are pretty much campus based. All the buildings are in one area, but we're also um, pretty much in the city centre as well, which I think is quite nice and quite unique. Um, but that's it. Yeah, thank you for your time and I'll answer any questions later on. That's great. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, I'm going to pass now over to Samar from University of Nottingham. Hi, everyone. Um, hope you can hear me well. So yeah, thank you so much for coming today. So hopefully you'll find this webinar really useful and interesting hearing all about the different universities. So I'm from the University of Nottingham. So the University of Nottingham is a big university bang in the middle of the UK. So we're in the Midlands and we are a campus based university. So um, we have three campuses in and around Nottingham um, that have kind of, well, that very mini, mini town, mini village sort of feel to them um, depending on the campus and then we also actually have a campus in China and a campus in Malaysia um, so we're quite a big university and it means that we've got students studying all sorts of subjects from all sorts of different countries all sorts of different interests which is great because you can meet people with completely different backgrounds to you and kind of find out more which is fab um, so yeah as a university we have lots of different subjects that you might be interested in um, so we had over, have over 300 undergraduate courses some of those things that we're really known for for, for example, will be the um, sort of medicine, veterinary medicine as well. We've got an amazing um, vet school um, on our sort of Bonington campus, which has got like a working farm on, things like that. Also courses like architecture, very popular at Nottingham. But then also we've got some amazing um, art um, 
a huge array of modules, for example, on our history course. Um, so yeah, we do span quite a lot of different areas across the university. Um, and in terms of coming to Nottingham and exploring, um, like everyone's saying, we're in autumn now, so the last round of open days, and we'll probably talk about them a little bit more as we go on today. But we have got one more open day happening, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, if you would um, like to visit us. Beyond kind of, yeah, open days then, in terms of how you learn at Nottingham, as with the rest of the Russell Group Universities, we're very big on research. So there are lots of opportunities to kind of get involved in research and with employers at the university generally. But beyond study then, there's lots of other things and fun societies and activities you can do as well. We have um, one of the only um, student-run theatres in the UK, for example, on campus. So yeah, there's lots to get involved in and explore. So yeah, looking forward to yeah, answering your questions today. Thanks. That's great. Thank you so much, Samar. And then finally, for our introduction, we've got Poppy from Queen Mary. Hi everyone. Um, so yeah, really happy to be here and looking forward to answering lots of your questions. Um, so Queen Mary, University of London. So we're a Russell Group University located in East London. Um, and one of the really big things that we pride ourselves on is diversity and that diversity of ideas. So really inclusive university. Um, we're actually campus based, um, which is quite unusual for London Russell Group Universities um, and being in East London we're in quite an international quite a bustling area so we're close to Shoreditch and Brick Lane, um, the tech city technology cluster, financial centres like Canary Wharf and the city so if you're looking for things like industrial placements you're in a really good location for it. Um, but we've actually got five campuses across London. Myland is um, one of our biggest campuses and is home to most of our academic schools. And it offers everything that you need to live and relax and study all in kind of one place. So you've got things like shops, you've got cafes, restaurants, you've got the students union, the gym, um, and then things like accommodation, the library, 24 hour library um, and lots of green outdoor space just on the doorstep as well. Um, and then if you're wanting to head into central London, you're kind of 15 minutes on the tube or a really short bus ride away. Um, so we have over 240 degree programmes and that's across three faculties. So we have humanities and social science sciences we've got the faculty of science and engineering and we've got the faculty of medicine and dentistry um, which is primarily located at our Whitechapel campus um, which is linked to things like the Royal London Hospital there as well so again a really good location for that um, and then we also do offer some degree apprenticeship programs so we were the first Russell Group University to offer degree apprenticeship programs and we have quite a few options there as well um, I guess in terms of support whilst you're at university, I always think this is something that's really important to ask about when you're heading to open days or if you're speaking to students, in a, like current students in advance of going to university. So each university will offer different types of student support. Um, we have things like the advice and counselling service where you can get um, money and practical advice, but also things like mental health support there as well. There's a disability and dyslexia service, residential support, so whether you are wanting to stay in Queen Mary halls of residence or you're wanting to go into private rented accommodation, residential support services can help out there with lots of advice. Um, and then there are things like study skills support as well um, that's offered across the university, but including through the libraries there. Um, in terms of our upcoming open day, so we actually have an online open day happening today, um, so you can always head over to that after uh, we finish the session, but our in-person open day is taking place on Saturday, so if you've not yet got plans for Saturday and want to come and visit us, then you're very welcome to do so and you can register for that online, um, and I always think open days are a really nice opportunity to 
engage with current students and get a real flavour and that sense of belonging for what it would be like um, at any given university. So I think I'll leave it there for now, um, but I'm very, very happy to answer any questions that you might have about um, Queen Mary or about university in general. That's great. Thank you so much, Poppy. So we found out a little bit more about our four institutions represented uh, on the panel today. Just a reminder that we've also got UCL, uh, we've got Manchester and we've also got Glasgow represented in the Q&A. Uh, and, uh, and a quick appreciation for um, not uh, putting too many questions into the Q&A at this particular point. Obviously, we're now going to be getting into the portion of the session where we're going to be talking about researching university options. So we come around to our first question uh, and we come back round to Dan at uh, Exeter. Dan, the first question for you was, based on your predicted grades, how should you choose your five universities? Um. Yeah, it's a really good question and, and, a, and a question I imagine a lot of you uh, are wondering and asking and um, I think there's a few different ways you can go about it. There's no sort of hard and fast rule. Um, I had a um, university a few years ago um, give uh, 131 advice, um, which was applying to one university that was a more um, sort of aspira aspirational choice. Um, so maybe, you know, the, the grades that they're asking for is one grade higher than what you're predicted. Um, so let's say you're, you know, predicted AAB and they're asking for, for three A's. Um, you know, maybe you could apply for one that's an aspirational choice and a grade higher. And then applying for three that are, you know, sort of realistic choices. So you're predicted AAB, they're asking for AAB. Um, you know, so it comes down to, you know, perhaps a strong personal statement and stuff like that that you can write. Um, so, yeah, three realistic choices and then one sort of safety net choice. Um, so, again, you're predicted A or B, maybe they're asking for ABB or 3Bs or something like that. Um, you know, just so that you can almost sort of try and guarantee yourself um, a, a, at least one offer. Um, so that's that's some advice I've heard, one, three, one. Uh, I mean, there's other ways of doing it. Maybe you could do a one-two-two. Maybe you could do a two-two-one. Uh, it sounds like sort of football formations now, doesn't it? But um, but there's various ways um, of doing it. And I, and I think um, another factor that you want to to consider is what course you're applying for as well. Um, if you're applying for a really competitive course, you know, something like economics or or medicine, um, then if you apply for a university that is a grade higher than uh, what you're predicted. Um, we have to be realistic and say it's very unlikely you'd be you'd be given an offer. Um, so perhaps in that in those circumstances, you'd actually take a tactic that's more like four uh, realistic ones and 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 one backup one, or maybe three and two. Um, if you're applying for a, for a course that's um, you know not not massively oversubscribed, um, you know a, a lot of universities that might be humanities courses perhaps. Um, then yeah, maybe maybe applying for some more um, aspirational choices that are, that are high in your predicted grades um, could be more realistic. Um, but I think I think the main thing is um, finding out your predicted grades as well, having having a chat with your uh, your teacher or your tutor about what they're going to uh, going to predict you. Um, if you haven't found that out yet, it usually happens towards um, towards the end of year twelve. Um, and so that you can start doing your research, so you can find out which universities are, are asking for, for, for my grades, my predicted grades, um, so which ones um, should I apply for. Um, hopefully that's some helpful advice. Um, again, happy to take any, any questions in the, in the Q&A on that topic. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, next question then uh, is for Sam at Newcastle. Um, Sam, are there any good websites for researching career prospects? Um, there's a very good one that I'm aware of. It's pretty aptly named. Um, so if you go to prospect.ac.uk, um, this is a really, really great resource um, that I, I don't know if many people are aware of. Um, obviously, a lot of a lot of courses and a lot of degree programs are quite career um, focused. So obviously, if you're wanting to do medicine, chances are you're wanting to become a doctor dentistry you want to become a dentist um but sometimes it's not always clear what a degree can lead on to in terms of a career um this website the prospects website is really really good in that you can 
um, put in the degree that you're interested and explore all the different sorts of career options related to that um, that degree program. So there might be some things on there that you have didn't even realise were a thing or that you've never heard of before. Um, so it's really, really good for sort of broadening those horizons and showing that you can go into lots of different careers, lots of different jobs um, just from one single degree. I think there's also an option on there where you can do sort of like... Um, a personality test and it tells you it tells you some careers and um, that you might be suited to depending on your your learning style your personality your interests and um, so it's quite personalized it's quite individual which is quite nice um so definitely check out prospects um i think there's also options where you can do it the other way around as well so you can put in certain careers that you might be interested in or certain employers or jobs and it can do the reverse and tell you what sort of degrees would be useful in that line of work um great tool a great resource and um, i definitely recommend having a little look at that if you get the chance to that's great thank you very much sam um so we're going to go back over to samar at nottingham samar the question is when and how should i start researching universities yeah great so yeah so that's a yeah, good question so in terms of when you should start researching universities i think that really re relates well to kind of at dan's first answer in terms of related to entry requirements so when you yeah, have as early as possible really to make sure that you're choosing firstly the right subjects to lead you to the things that you hopefully want to do one day is a really important thing and um, so looking at in case you need to do specific gcse's routes that might support you or study specific a levels or BTEX that will help you get onto a course. So I think that helps you with that initial when. But beyond that, in terms of if you've done that bit and you want to start identifying what courses or what universities you want to go to, I think kind of a year in advance, so in year 12 really, is the best time to get a bit more stuck in. So there are kind of a few different stages I would normally recommend. So first of all, it's all about just identifying your interest. So universities, there are a lot of um, degrees where you can study the same subject at different universities, but they've got quite specific differences. Or you might go from a subject that you have done as say an A-level like biology, but at a university, there could be lots of branching degrees from that, talking like things like neurosciences, animal science, or more specific like genetics. So just finding out what subject you would really like to do as a university course. So identify your interest as much as you can. So try and expose yourself to your subject in as much depth as you can. So maybe um, explore what kind of courses are out there at university. So gather information from university web websites you can also use things like the UCAS hub is a great resource to see the array of different courses that come up just when you search a subject and it will show you maybe new terms you might want to be looking for for example if you're interested in geography it might show you terms like environmental science that are maybe newer to you but might help you with your research so yeah try and identify your interest and then get more exposure to them at a university level so maybe if you can look at taster lectures and things like that, so I think on my slide, I had a bit of information about our ambition program. So on like our ambition Nottingham program, we have lots of um, taster lectures and sessions online where you can hear from academics a bit of an experience of a subject. So you have some real life insight and then um, you can kind of go and further explore and other universities offer sort of similar different things um, or those sorts of things on open days. So yeah, trying to get a bit of, first-hand experience of that university teaching and that subject will help and um, other things I would then suggest is to go and try and build your yeah, further connections with universities so go and visit them so go to campuses if you can go to open days in person is a great way to find out what you like and also what you don't like as well so where do you see yourself fitting in so try and yeah go and visit universities and if you can't quite visit or you're not ready to do that, connect with them in different ways. So maybe follow some universities on social media and maybe go on their websites. And they often have things like Unibuddy, where you can message current students and ask questions about their experiences. So you can connect with students and staff in different ways would be a good way to kind of start researching and feeling like you understand a little bit more about how university works. Um, and then, yeah, I think the last thing would be as well to take advantage of any opportunities at your school and college. A lot of the different people on this call today will be visiting a lot of your schools and colleges throughout the year or seeing you at big UCAS fairs and go ahead and ask 
any universities your questions that's what we're there for so we'd be more than happy to answer any questions and try and yeah, just gather all of that information so there's a few things i would start researching in terms of your options in year 12. thanks Fantastic. Thank you so much, Samar. Uh, and our, for our final uh, uh, first round question, uh, we go over to Poppy at Queen Mary. Poppy, the question for you was, uh, would you recommend attending open days? Is there a list of Russell Group University open days? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first off, definitely attend an open day or attend multiple open days. Um, I think it's the best way to get a real feel for what it would be like to study at a university and to uh to picture whether you would see yourself um studying there um do you like the environment um how were the academic staff how were the support staff um so make sure that when you go along to an open day you're kind of prepared maybe you have a list of questions that you want to ask in advance um quite often you will receive a program for the open day in advance so plan your day what talks do you want to go to who do you want to go and speak to that kind of thing um, and make sure that you, I guess, spread that between the academic side of things, but also the student life and those support services as well. University, obviously, the primary reason you go is the academic study, um, but you're going to be there for a minimum of three years, probably. So it's really important that you choose somewhere that you can see yourself belonging. Um, at open days, you can attend subject taster sessions. So maybe if you're undecided between a couple of subjects, might be a nice opportunity to plan in a couple of subject taster sessions. Again, go and ask those questions that you might have. Um, speaking to current students is a nice way to do things because quite often they'll give you a real honest flavour of what it's actually like to study at that university. And then things like support services fairs, where you can go and ask those questions about things like student finance, what bursaries are on offer, um, if uh you maybe have a disability or a long-term health condition you could speak to people like the disability and dyslexia support service in advance or ask all of those questions that you might have about things like contextual admissions that was mentioned earlier um so all of those services will be available at open days definitely go along have your questions answered in terms of finding a list of open days um so the uk university search website lists open days so I definitely have a look there um, you can also see lots of them on the UCAS website as well um, and I think as I mentioned our open day is taking place on Saturday um, and that's available to register for online as well but yeah definitely do that planning in advance have a look if universities offer things like travel support to help you attend an open day for example if you're looking at going a little bit further afield Quite often there are things like widening participation bursaries to help you fund the cost of travel and stuff like that. Um, but I think my top tip is go along, have your questions answered and try and try and head to a few different open dates so that you can compare the experience as well um, and really get a feel for whether you can see yourself studying there. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll leave that on there. But again, really happy to any answer any further questions either about Queen Mary or about open days in general. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Poppy. Uh, we're going to go around to our second round of questions then. So we're going to be going back to Daniel at uh, University of Exeter. Daniel, the question is, uh, who qualifies for a contextual offer and how will universities know about these circumstances? Do I need to include this information in my personal statement? Thanks, Martin. Um, so who qualifies for a contextual offer? The answer is, uh, well, A, lots of people. And B, it will vary from university to university. Um, so in a moment, I'll, I'll read you out um, some examples from Exeter. A, uh, a lot of the um, qualifications that we have at Exeter will apply to other universities as well. However, other universities um, may have additional things, may not have one or two things that we have. So it really does depend on different universities. So um, what I recommend is if you think you might qualify, uh, based on some of the factors that I'll read out or if there's any sort of um, additional criteria um, or if you've had any sort of disadvantages, things that have, that have held you back um, from from studying academically, um, then what I recommend is looking on university websites. University websites are very good 
uh, at listing lots of their criteria. So if you just type in, you know, Exeter contextual offer, Newcastle contextual offer, et cetera, um, it will take you to those pages and, and you can have a look through. Because because actually, if, if you're someone who, who does have a sort of um, a specific need or, or or you've had something in life um, that, that might have held you back, um, it might be that uh, there might just be a few universities um, for, for whom you might qualify for that contextual offer. So that could be what might influence you um, in your choice. Because if at, if at one university you you know receiving a one or two grade uh, reduction or maybe even financial support, uh, but other university you might you might not be receiving that. Obviously, that might might sway your decision and what you could be eligible for. So um, here's a few things from our website. Um, so you could be eligible for a uh, two grade uh, re reduction, so lower grades uh, reduction um, than than the standard. So depending on where you live um, is one factor. So if you live in an area with low participation rates in higher education and you go to a state school, um, if you uh, live in certain areas of the southwest or Wales um, and go to certain schools in that area, uh, if you're eligible for, so this is a new one now, if you're eligible for free school meals, um, so the data coming from the Department for Education uh, provided by UCAS, you could be eligible for um, a, a reduction. Uh, if you're part of the Serum Partnership or the Elephant Group Partnership of Schools, uh, if you're a care leaver, if you're care experienced, or if you are a carer um, of, of someone, uh, or if you have parental responsibility, uh, if you've been part of our pro progression programs, such as Extra Scholars, Realising Opportunities, Sutton Trust Pathways, uh, or Mature Access Pathway, um, that will be something that other universities will, will have as well. I'm aware of other universities having sort of summer schools and things uh, that, again, if you participate in those, uh, you could be eligible for, for a contextual offer. Or uh, the final one that I've got here is if you are seeking asylum, have limit, uh, limited leave to remain and are from a from a state school or you have a refugee status as well. Um, so that's uh, that's an example from uh, Exeter. What I'll do is we've got a contextual offer uh, eligibility checker. Um, that's a tongue twister. Contextual offer eligibility checker uh, on our website um, where you can, it asks you a load, a load of questions um, to see whether you might be uh, eligible for it. It's not a guarantee, but it will uh, give you a, um, a a pretty reliable indicator as to whether you would be eligible for uh, that. So I'll pop that in the chat. Hopefully that will show up. Martin, let me know if that's not everyone. To hosts and panellists. Oh, I might have got that wrong. Um, is there a way of sending that to everyone, um, Martin? Fab, thank you for sending that through. Um, so, so you can have a click on there. Um, as I say, that is just for Exeter. Other universities might have um, similar things, slightly different things. Um, with most of it, it will come through your UCAS uh, application. Um, so obviously on, on your UCAS application, you'll put down, um, uh, you know, where you live, what school you go to. So that covers off um, a lot of the information. Um, uh, a lot of universities will know from your details whether you've been on one of these, um, summer school programmes, things like that. Um, there's information you can put down. Um, if you are a refugee or have, have status like that as well, your um, your tutor or whoever's writing your personal statement, uh, sort of writing your reference, it's not writing your personal statement. You have to do that, unfortunately. Um, so whoever's writing your reference can put information in there as well. Um, if there's um, sort of particular uh, disadvantages you've had, things that have held you back, maybe a bereavement as well. Um, so that can be something that universities can consider. Um, so most of it will be on your your UCAS application. If you do feel there is anything else that you want to mention, you, you can put it in your your personal statement. Um, but most of it will be done through your um, through your UCAS application anyway. Um, the information will be able to be received through there. Um, I hope that's helpful. I realise that was a lot of information to to throw at you, but um, yeah, for, for, uh, my main takeaway would be if you think you might be eligible. Um, there's no harm in checking, is there? You know, there's no harm in having a look at our checker, having a look at other university websites um, to see whether whether you could be eligible. You know, it just might take popping your postcode in, um, and and it could be a two grade reduction for you. Um, again, happy to take any questions on that. 
That was great, thank you, Daniel. Thank you so much. And yeah, and I echo those sentiments. You know, you've you've got to put yourself in the position to be able to see it. So um, click on that link and and find out a little bit more about that. Thanks again. Uh, we're going back round to Sam then at Newcastle. Sam, the question is: What is the best way to find out about Russell Group Universities if you're unable to attend an open day? Um, there's lots of different things that you could do. Um, firstly, I think a lot of universities are now offering online open days, um, or virtual virtual talks and virtual events. So I definitely have a look at each university's offering to see if there's any virtual events that you can attend if you're unable to um travel to an open day. Um, lots of universities might also offer um travel bursaries or some money to support you in getting to the open days so if if travel costs and something is is what's holding you back from attending those open days i definitely have a look to see if there's funds and travel costs that um you could be eligible for for those visits um i think in general just doing as much research as you can is is always a helpful helpful thing and um, you could use the UCAS website to compare different courses at different universities and um, you can search uh, on the UCAS directory to see if uh, to see which universities um, offer the course that you're interested in um, and just do a deep dive just do as much research as you possibly can you might want to have a little look um, exactly at the modules that certain universities are offering for your course to see if that sways you in any particular direction um, what else would be a good tip? Um, UCAS fairs as well. Um, obviously, universities will be traveling around the country all throughout the year. Um, so you can see if there's any events happening near you that you could go to. So like a like a fair style event, if you've, if you've not been to one before, um, I definitely recommend going to a UCAS fair or something like that, or a UK Unisearch um, fair as well. Um, just do as much research as you can um, talk to people. If you know people that have been to that university, ask them how they found it, ask sort of what their, the, the positives were that came out of their degree. Um, I think that the main takeaway would just be to do as much research as you possibly can um, if you're not able to attend the open days. That is great. Thank you so much, Sam. And I appreciate the plug. Yes, uh, <clears throat> UK University says we do run events across the country. So if your school isn't already signed up to attend one of those, perhaps quickly check, uh, go onto our website, ukuniversitysearch.com. Um, enough of the plug. I'll pass over now to Samar at the University of Nottingham. Um, Samar, the question was, when would you recommend doing a foundation year? Yeah, that's a, a great question. I think there are a few kind of specific scenarios where a foundation year is a really good thing to be looking at because um, it can really help you to explore a subject area or transition to HE. Um, so kind of the five main scenarios that I would suggest, first of all, is um, if you're not sure if you're kind of academically ready. So you might feel like you need a bit of additional preparation for the course that you're going into, um, or you might need to in terms of your grades to meet university entry requirements for a course. So so that could be um, maybe you're not quite there in terms of the maths or the science that you've done. Um, and that will help you to kind of meet university entry requirements by using a foundation year as a route that can help you bridge that gap. And um, the next thing would be if you're changing direction. So say if you have done all of your A-levels or B-techs in a more of a like, STEM area and you're hoping to study more in humanities, then it can be helpful to do a foundation year to help you gain that background knowledge that you might need. Um, and in terms of if you're not quite that, that kind of different academically readiness, it can be that you don't have the right type of qualification and a foundation year is necessary. So, for example, if there is a programme where a university only typically accepts A-levels, then a foundation year could potentially be a route to still get into um, that course if you don't haven't currently done the right types of qualification. But there are other reasons as well that people might want to do foundation studies. So I'd say um, in terms of just building your confidence, maybe you don't feel quite ready and um, kind of prepared to confidence wise academically to go straight into first year. And foundation year can be a really nice safe space to develop that familiarity with the university, your university skills and make sure that you really feel like you know what you're about to start um, before you then kind of start first year with everybody else. So you can feel a lot more prepared is often what we hear from foundation year students. 
And lastly, I would say in terms of exploring your interests. So maybe, you know, you want to study kind of more a science or you want to study engineering, but you're not sure what type um, humanity is not sure what type that can be a good route to do a foundation year because you get more of a taster of the subject at a degree level so how they're taught at university so you can ha have a bit of a taster of different ones learn different subjects before you commit to a specific subject focus on a degree so ultimately yeah a foundation year is a great thing to do if you aren't quite academically prepared um for university yet or you just don't feel like like you're you're personally ready um, and you find that kind of su additional support valuable that additional preparation time so it can be a really good way to prepare for future study so if that's something that resonates with you this could be a really good pathway to consider thanks that's great thank you so much samar uh, and then the final question for our second round uh, is going to be going over to queen mary the question is uh, when should i apply if i want to take a gap year yeah thank you for that um so my first thing to say would be to check the university's entry on uh, policy on deferred entry so each university will have a different policy um, and it's important to check it for the course that you're applying to as well so you can find this information online if you're struggling to find it don't hesitate to contact the universities um, there will be people there that are really willing to help you out so this will just let you know where you stand in terms of um, uh, kind of having your offers early and your offers ready if you did go down the deferred entry route um, ahead of undertaking your gap year. So that means that you can apply whilst you're still in school or college and have the support of your school and college through that UCAS application. So I would recommend using deferred entry if you're able to for your course and for the university that you're applying to. Um, if that's not possible, then it's not a problem. Um, so you can apply the following year. Um, it would just mean that you're applying whilst you're on your gap year. And it depends, obviously, what your what your plans are during that time. So more often than not, it's kind of nice to get that out of the way and know where you stand in advance. I think the other thing to say in terms of gap years uh, is let the university know what your plans are. So what are you planning to do during that gap year? Are you planning to work? Are you planning to... Um, travel for example and during that time what are you planning to learn so maybe if you're going traveling during your, or during your gap year are you going to develop things like your independent skills and is that then going to help you um, in being a more independent and prepared student when you're at university are you planning to work if so potentially you're going to become more financially independent you might also develop some of those transferable skills that are going to be really useful to you on your course. So things like your communication skills, your teamwork and that kind of thing. So I think in your personal statement, let the university know what your plans are. Um, but with that, what you're gonna learn from your gap year and how you're gonna bring those skills that you've learned in your gap year to the course and to the university um, so that you're really demonstrating you know how you're going to be a well-rounded student there as well um yeah I think I'll leave that there so I think I would say go for deferred entry if you can do if not you can apply the following year that's great thank you so much Poppy uh we've got a, a third and kind of final round of questions then that we're going to be going through to our panelists for um keep uh, your questions coming through in the Q&A if there's anything that's um coming up in the answers that you're wanting further clarification on put something in there and obviously make sure to address it to the person who said it. So our final round of questions. So we're going to be going back round to Daniel Exeter again. Daniel, the question is, what are the main differences between studying at a city or campus university? Yeah, really good question. Um, people, people have uh, different preferences. Um, so for some people, you know, just going to a campus just, just feels right. And it's not, you know, often we can't put our, our fingers on it, but it just, it just feels right and nicer. Whereas for other people, they like the, the sort of busyness and the um, hubbub of a city. Is hubbub a word? Um, busyness and, you know what I mean, the sort of constant things happening um, and, the, and the, you know, the craziness of living in a, in a city, in a city centre. Um, so for, 
for, for most people, it is just, you know, feeling what, what, what seems right for you. Um, I guess the, the, the main differences are, and let's put it quite simply, a campus is where everything is sort of self-contained. Um, so, you know, your accommodations there, your, um, your, your sort of lecture theatres and, and stuff like that, your seminar rooms, all the academic stuff. Um, your, your sports facilities will be there as well, most likely. Um, you know, your, your student union buildings and stuff like that. So everything's sort of self-contained on a bit of a, a bit of a base, really. Um, if you think about, um, you know, the school you're at, you know, whether it's a small school or a large school, that everything's there, isn't there? And your school has a has a border and, um, you know, everyone on site is there for school, you know, either the, the, the students or the or the teachers, the caretakers, the staff. And and university is similar, obviously on a on a bigger scale. You know, there is a there is a there is a boundary. You know, whether there's a, a wall around the campus or uh, or not. Um, and you know, pretty much everyone there, although often they're open to the public, but pretty much everyone there is either a student or university staff or or, or, or you know security. Um, so everything's self-contained. Whereas at a city university. Um, everything's in amongst the city. So your accommodation might be a sort of university block in amongst the the shops and um, your your teaching facilities might be some big building next door to a big TK Maxx. Um, and your, your sports facilities might be, you know, a bit, a bit further out perhaps um, from the city. So everything's in amongst. Um, so, you know, you could go from a lecture to... A restaurant next door or something like that so it does just does just depend purely on on preference on what you prefer um you know i, I know some people who who absolutely love the idea of a, of a city university personally i i was more of a, a campus boy and, and and enjoyed having everything self-contained um i think i think i went to a stage where i, I literally went weeks and weeks without actually leaving the campus because every everything you need uh, is there whereas for some people that's that's an absolute nightmare and they'd feel a bit sort of trapped and, and self-contained and they'd want to want to get out more so yeah it does it does just depend i'd recommend visiting if you're not sure of the difference between the two and if you're not sure which one you prefer uh, i'd recommend visiting one of each and, and and you can get a feel for the place that's that's what it was for me it was it was going to an open day seeing campus um and thinking you know this this feels right for me um so yeah it does it does purely come down to feelings and preference really um you, you might be sat there thinking, I don't know which one I would prefer. So, yeah, visiting would be what I recommend. Thanks. Yeah, I completely agree with that, Daniel. Um, our next question then, coming back round to Sam at Newcastle. Uh, if I'm not sure which university I want to apply to, what would be your advice to help me pick the right one for me? Um, I guess just following on from what um, Daniel was saying about your your personal preferences, um, your personal interests, and what you want to get out of it, and um, I think I think that's a really good place to start is to ask yourself what you want to get out of doing your degree or your your course or your subject area, um, and once you know that, you can sort of start to do your research in a more sort of targeted way. Um, some things that I've written down to consider would be things like um, look at the teaching styles. On that degree and um, some universities teach in very different ways do you prefer lectures seminars practicals and um, just do again a deep dive and research how that course is taught at different universities you might see that there's one university that does it in a particular way that's more suited to you and um, so it, it can be quite individual and i think you should be looking for the sort of things that um suit you most and um, you could look at things like assessment styles if you know your you're really not suited to doing exams. You could look for courses that are more um, essay coursework based potentially, or vice versa, if you prefer to work with exams or practicals, for example. Um, you could look at contact hours. Do you think you're someone who prefers to have less contact hours and do more independent study? Or do you like to have a, a full day nine to five um, studying in lectures all day, every day? Um, again, that's something to think about. Um, a really, really good tip that I was given um, was to have a look at the individual modules that a university is offering for your course of interest. There might be a university that's doing a very, very specific niche module in something that you're really, really interested in. 
Um, so that's something to look at as well. Usually you can get that information from um, the, you know, the course page on the university website. So have a look at the modules that that course is offering. You might think, oh, this is more tailored to exactly what my interests are. Um, so that's something to look at as well. Um, I guess as well as Daniel was saying, um, think about the location. Um, the size, whether you want a campus university, a city university. Um, there might be certain links with industry or employers that a university have that's going to be particularly useful for you um, and your career and your, your sort of aspirations after university. There might be certain placements that, are, that a university offers. I'm giving you loads of information here. It's all just coming through, coming through. Um, so yeah, think about that. But at the end of the day, it's it's personal preference, it's personal choice. Um, visit a university. Um, I think a lot, a lot of times people are looking at universities and courses, and they know the right one for them because it feels right. So say for example, you're on the campus, you're speaking to the lecturers, and you just get a sense that this is the place you could see yourself studying. And remember that you're gonna you're potentially gonna be studying there for three, four, maybe more years. So that's something to take into account as well. Could you imagine yourself there for three years, maybe even more? Um, so yeah, lots of things to consider, but remember it's it's a personal choice and whatever suits you the best. That's great. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, now back over to Samar uh, at Nottingham. What's, and this can be quite a lengthy answer, so I'm, I'm guessing possibly need to reduce this slightly, but what sets a Russell Group University apart from a non-Russell Group University? Yeah, good question. Yes, yeah, so I'll try and kind of summarise into key different themes, I suppose. So the main thing that the Russell Group is, of course, known for is research. So we are universities that all undertake a lot of academic research in the fields that we specialise in. Um, but this, how does this impact you as a student, I suppose, is the main thing that is, is really useful for you to know. So first of all, I would say it's in terms of who is actually teaching you. So the academics that are teaching you our Russell Group University, uh, because they're at research universities, it normally means that they're there not just to teach you, but also to undertake academic research in their field. So it means that the people teaching you are at the forefront of their field and they're constantly developing it themselves. So the information they're teaching you, you know, not only are they just feeding back study, you know, if, about information about, for example, you know, studies that have happened in that field, they're actually working on them at the moment, which means they can give you kind of really direct kind of brand new teaching which is really interesting and also in terms of just finding out about that career path into research so if you're interested in pursuing research yourself you're being taught by researchers um, kind of every day so you can talk to them about that career about um, what work they're working on so that can gain really good insights for you and in terms of then opportunities for you to undertake research, that can mean that you might be able to be involved in some way. That could be in, in all sorts of ways, but potentially, for example, as a post postgraduate, some of those universities will have more places kind of yet yeah, with master's degrees, for example, that you can pursue. They will have people doing their PhDs with them. And um, so there are more routes into research at that university to stay there if you are interested. It can also mean that the facilities you have at a university is different. Um, so, for example, they could be investing further in their research facilities, in their labs, in their resources, or in humanities, things like manuscripts, libraries, or a massive variety of different things. Um, but they could be really involved in that. So that would be another really good yeah, kind of area where you can be using different and improved facilities. And also it's interesting because, of course, it's a group of universities, so you can find out more about what the other universities are doing and you can kind of connect with them and with students at fellow universities. And lastly, I think just in terms of then reputationally, that can also be a help. I wouldn't say this should be like the main part of your university choices necessarily. However, I know it's something that everyone's interested in. So Russell Group universities do have a very good reputation. Often um, across the, the Russell Group, we have very good like, kind of graduate outcomes as well. Um, depends on yeah every university, but that is, is a really important thing, of course, what you're hoping to go and pursue. So that would be something I definitely bear in mind. But yeah, there are yeah, a variety of Russell Group universities University. So you can have a look on the Russell Group website to see who they are and what kind of things they go up to. But yeah, if you're interested in pursuing kind of research related things and not only studying your field, but developing that field further, then the Russell Group is a really interesting thing to be a part of. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Samar. And our final question of the day, 
um, than is going to be going across the poppy at Queen Mary. Um, if I'm worried about the cost of university, what are my options and should that shape the university I apply for? Yeah, this is a really important question, actually. Um, obviously, finance is um, a huge topic and cost of living is a huge topic at the moment. I guess the first thing to say is that if you are applying for a maintenance loan through Student Finance England, for example, um, the amount of maintenance loan that you'll be eligible for will be dependent on your household income. Um, so if you're um, from a family with lower household income, you'll be eligible for more maintenance loan. Um, and that that is non-repayable until you graduate um, and then you're earning over a certain amount. Um, so you don't need to worry about paying that back whilst you are studying. Um, there's a really good calculator to have a look at that on the Student Finance website. So you can have a look at how much you might be eligible for in advance of applying. And that might just help you with planning your budget, thinking about where is realistic for you to study, um, having a look at the cost, for example, of accommodation in different areas. Um, the other thing to say is that, you know, you don't have to move out and live in halls of residence and live in accommodation. We've got a really high proportion of commuter students at the university who choose to stay at home. And quite often that can be uh, a bit of a cheaper way of doing things. Um, but I think do your research in advance. So have a look at things like bursaries and scholarships and what you might be eligible for. Consider the cost of living at different places. So you, for example, you if you are looking at halls of residence, you can have a look at the cost of that in advance and just make sure you're planning your budget um you can actually book an appointment with a queen mary welfare advisor in advance of getting to the university if you have um, for example money concerns or if you think you have a particularly complicated like student finance situation you're going through the student finance process and you're finding that difficult then someone can help you out with that so for example if you're applying as an independent student, if you're maybe estranged from family, for example, then that might be um, a good thing for you to do in advance is have that conversation with a welfare advisor to help you through that kind of budgeting and student finance process. Um, so there are bursaries available um, and you can have a look at these on different universities websites. So obviously I'll give you a Queen Mary example. So we've got the Queen Mary University of London bursary um, which is for students who come from households where the income is less than £35,000 and that bursary is up to £1,700 per year at the moment. So it's worth having a look if you're eligible for that um, or for anything similar but there are also additional sources of support so for example we've got a care leaver and a strange student bursary which offers additional support over the summer period and then there are also various scholarships available. And then each university will have something called the Financial Assistance Fund or a Hardship Fund. So if you are in a position whilst you're studying at a university where you are really struggling with those finances, you can evidence that, you know, you've not spent your money in a really silly way, but actually you are just genuinely struggling and that, you know, there's a reason for that. Then universities have something like a financial assistance fund which is a discretionary payment fund um, that can help you out if you're struggling and there's also people at universities to help you out with things like that budgeting process and actually managing your money throughout the year as well um, so I think the key thing there is you know speak out if you are struggling um, reach out for that support um, and there should be a lot of it available both pre-entry but also then once you are at university as well That's great. Thank you so much, Poppy. Uh, and with that, kind of round out the um, end of our session today. I've seen some really, really great questions come through in the Q&A. So thank you very much for all those who attended and asked some questions.